Morning everyone, The Wizards of Wands, Twice Magic, Chapter 16. I have to go and check because we're further on than I thought we were. Silly me. The Witches Attack. With a terrible smell of burning feathers, the witches swooped. When witches attack, they assault all of your senses at the same time. Their stink is unbearable, the worst swell, smell you can possibly imagine. Their scream is like the shriek of 500 angry foxes and it buries itself in your brain and reverberates around your head until it feels like you might go crazy. Warriors, wizards, giants and lynxes, cried Psycrax. Stop fighting each other. Fight the witches. And Encanso held up his staff and yelled out exactly the same orders. Psycrax and Encanso didn't really need to shout out these orders. The noise and the smell were so horrid that the wizards and the warriors instinctively banding together to fight these new terrifying assailants. Warriors and wizards and giants were in one instant fighting back to back on the same side, but there was an astonishing number of the witches, a cloud of them like a swarm of gigantic malevolent crows. The witches were happy to attack the magic things, but they were still afraid of the warriors and they couldn't attack them like the king would, which could. Hold fast and defend your positions, cried Cycrax, that great war leader. Fight the witches together! The king witch sharpened his talons against each other like a blacksmith sharpening a gigantic sword. And then... As quick as a weasel, he stretched up his claw and screamed an unintelligible gargle of command. We need to defend the children, said Encanso, jumping up aboard his lynx, and Psycorax glided up behind him, side saddle, arms crossed, for she would have died rather than put her arms around Encanso's waist. It was remarkable the way that she did not lose her balance as the lynx leapt forward. But then Queen Psycorax was really rather a remarkable woman. Go away, shouted Tsar as Encanso pulled the lynx to a halt beside him. I don't need your help. You have to let us defend you, Tsar, said Encanso. I had no idea that creature was after you. In the heat of the moment and in his anxiety, Tsar admitted something that he had not really yet ready to admit to himself. The king which is an after me, he's after wish, said Tsar. Wish is the girl of destiny. We need to help Wish. Above Zar's head, the whir of soft wings, five witches soared, and they did not pause for Zar. Zar was right. They were, after all, after Wish, while her magic was still untrained and uncontrolled. Wish was in the centre of the courtyard. She had been about to take off her eye patch, but the witches had su attacked her with such suddenness that she'd only just nudged it up a smidgen. And as they attacked, Encanso leapt from the back of his snow cat and pointed his fingers towards Wish, making a defensive magical force field the size of a very large round invisible boulder, which sprung up around Wish to protect her. The force field burned bright as the witches struck again and again, like great black ravens attacking a nasty morse, a tasty morseful. Such was the force of their onslaughts, onslaughts that Wish was rolled drunkenly round the courtyard, thrown about inside the force field with such violence that she was unable to take off her eye patch. Every time she put up her arms to do it, she was thrown off her balance once more. The King Witch landed in a blur of wings and crouched down long black drips of saliva pouring from both sides of his jaws. It's weakening! screeched the King Witch, three glowing eyes red raw as the great slugging force of the kit witch's spell attacks began to crush the force field protecting wish punching great dents in it as it rolled pathetically this way and that czar ran towards them the enchanted sword slipping in his trembling hand get off her he cried waving the sword at the king witch the king witch crouched lower you fool he whispered do you not know boy that you are mine I am not yours, screamed Tsar. You have to be careful what you wish for, crooned the king witch, and you wished for witch blood, willingly took it, put out your hand and made the cut yourself. X marks the spot. How could Tsar deny it? His whole hand beneath the glove was burning a bright, terrible green of such vividness that it glowed 
turned the glove itself transparent. Excuse me. And now I control you, said the King Witch. It was I who urged you to escape from the prison of Gorman Crack, and I who helped you to do it. You brought her here to me. No, said Zar, very, very white. It's not true. But it is only sometimes when you reach the end of the quest that you realise what it has been about all along. They had fallen into a very clever trap set by a king witch. All along the way, they had thought they were making free choices, but silent, frozen, unmoving, the king witch had been controlling them, like the spider in the middle of a great grey web. The king witch turned his dead face to Tsar. You can't fight me, he said. Tsar's bright green hand burned hot with such fire that it made Tsar cry out, and it was as if his arm had a mind of its own. His own hand, holding on to the enchanted sword, dragged him forward, with his body desperately trying to pull the other way. But his hand was inexorable. Inexor it pulled him with dreadful force. He tried to resist, holding on to his right elbow with his other hand, but like it or not, the good for good or for evil, the rest of his body was attached to that hand, so what could he do? Heels dragging, he was hauled towards Wish, who was still being thrown about in Encanto's force field. If the sword kills witches, it can kill her too. And I can eat her dead just as well as alive, whispered the King Witch. You can kill her for me, boy. Humans are weak. She won't want to hurt you. Remember who you are. You're a wizard and she a warrior. Wizards hate warriors. I'm sorry, Wish. I just, I can't stop it, shouted Tsar as his bright green hand brought the sword down on the red force field and broke through it with a BAM! It shattered into thousands of pieces that exploded round the courtyard like tiny splinters of bright red glass before melting into the ear. Good, good boy, crooned the King Witch. Now, go. Go for the girl. Wish stood there, her fingers crooked, now underneath the eye patch. She couldn't lift it to fight Tsar. Poor Tsar was still trying to control his own hand, but the combination of his arm with the witch stain and the enchanted sword was far too strong for him, and he was being dragged nearer and nearer towards Wish, with the sword raised above his head to attack her, even though he was pulling in the other direction with all his might. I can't fight this. It's too strong. For me, it's too strong, thought Tsar wretchedly. Don't think about your weaknesses. Think about your strengths, shouted Caliban. Work with what you do have, not with what you don't. Use your disobedience, Tsar, shouted Queen Cycrax from behind him. You have plenty of that. Tsar turned and raised the sword towards the King Witch. He couldn't fight the King Witch completely. He knew he wasn't strong enough for that, but he could work with the King Witch's own desires. So I had learned the lesson from the King Witch because that was exactly what the King Witch had been doing to him. You want the sword, Witch? shouted Tsar. You can have it! With every single ounce of disobedience in his disobedient body, Tsar shouted, No! Take that, you stinking great feathered arm freak of a nightmare, Witch! And he threw the sword with all of his might towards the King Witch. There was a moment when it seemed as if the sword wasn't going to leave the green grip of Tsar's hand. But Tsar had guessed rightly. The King Witch did want the sword, for it was a very powerful magical object. The King Witch's own wanting loosened Tsar's grip. The sword sailed through the air and landed a couple of feet in front of him with a loud clatter. I will not do it, said Tsar, chest heaving with the struggle of it, because I like wish. The King Witch was astonished at this defiance. The boy should be ent entirely his. How is it possible that Tsar not, would not do his bidding? But it would not change the ending. 
the king which would finish this on his own, himself, all his own work. He reached out his taloned hand and grasped the enchanted sword. He said some very powerful words of a spell to bind the sword to his hand so that the girl could not take it from him. With one, two beats of his great wings, he leapt in the air, wings spread wide, up, up, up. And then he swooped, terrible mouth agape, to swallow the child whole. Chapter 17 Taking off the eye patch And Wish took off her eye patch Taking off the eye patch was like opening the door into another world. Looking through her left eye, it was as if she was standing on the top of a snowy mountain where the snow was so glitteringly bluey white that it dazed you. The colours were so forceful, the red so red, the green so purely green that it overwhelmed her and she cried out now as they hit her almost like a physical blow. She'd forgotten just how sickening this feeling was, how terrifying. Very few wizards before or since have ever had the rare power of a magic eye. A power that misted up Wish's brain with such furious energy that her hair leapt up around her like an electrical ruff and the ground beneath her swayed like a sea and the broken walls shook further and all around lost their balance as the magic came screaming out of her eye and met the blast of the swooping King Witch's magic. Closer, closer, the King Witch dived so, that clo so close that Wish could see right down the glassly maw of his open throat. The enchanted sword pointed right towards her. Oh, by the gods of water, what can I do? I have all this magic, but I don't know how to control it. She tried to imagine removing the enchanted sword from the King Witch's hand, but it was stuck fast by the spell he had used. What else can I do? Focus on what you do know, not what you don't, Ian. Don't wish. I know how to move, Ian. All that practising that she'd done in the punishment cupboard and Caliban's lessons back on the sweet track. All around her were the figures of the witch smeller and his magic hunters with their armour frozen around them, stiff as statue. And then, almost the very second that the thought had come into her head, the helmet of the nearest magic hunter began to untwist, as Wish's magic made it move. She didn't even have to point her hand at it. All it took was a thought. Be careful what you wish for, witch, whispered Wish. You wanted magic that works on iron, and you shall have it. The King Witch was abruptly halted, mid-air, by a flying iron helmet that hurtled through the sky and CLANG! attached itself to the enchanted sword, making the Witch's sword arm so heavy that his whole body lurched violently to the right. The King Witch tried to shake off the helmet, but it was stuck fast, for the helmet had come into the orbit of the spell that the King Witch had cast to bind the sword into his hand, and it would not budge. However hard the king would shook it, clang, 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 another helmet and an iron glove soared through the air and stuck to the other side of the sword. The king which said the words of the undoing to take off the binding spell he had cast, and he had the first stirring of her knees. What was that? The king which asked in a startled sort of way, for as this enchanted sword sprang out of the king witch's hand and dropped point first into the ground, the magic hunter's frozen armour had exploded apart leaving the bewildered witch smeller and his soldiers standing in their underclothes, staring upwards in astonishment while their armour rocketed towards the king witch. Spears, helmets, chains, knives, swords, breastplates, not to mention an entire witch-destroying weapon. The whole armoury of iron that the magic hunters carried with them on magic hunting expeditions were sailing through the air towards the king witch as if they were arrows fired at a bird. More iron, thought Wish. More and more iron. The army of iron attached itself to the King Witch as if he were a magnet. The King Witch tried to beat all the iron things off, but they clogged up his wings and the harder he tried to fight them off, the harder they stuck fast, until he became smothered in a thick ball of iron, iron that melted around him as it met the green heat of his magic. It weighed the King Witch down and he plunged deeper and deeper in the air, and Wish added more and more and more and more and more until he fell to the earth like a stone. Tsar and Wish scrambled out of the way over the heaving, tumbling earth as crash! 
The witch, encased in iron, landed with such force that he created a cre great crater in the courtyard of the ruined castle of Pentaglion. Just as the iron solidified in a final enclosing ball, the king witch shot one last blast of magic from his five talon fingers, and the magic came swimming out and hit Wish on the chest, and there was a mind-blowingly loud noise, and a blinding white light, and something exploded with such energy that Tsar was knocked over. The earth came to a shuddering halt at last, and great clouds of dust billowed and wafted across the shattered remains of the courtyard. The ball of iron that encased the king, which was strange to say exactly the shape of the stone that used to be Queen Cyprax's stone that takes away magic, maybe because it was a shape that Wish had seen before. The clouds of witches who had been hovering, waiting, watching for the outcome of this battle shrieked across the sky, howling and raging, against the defeat of their leader before dispersing, flying away to who knows where. The ball of iron rocked once, twice on its pointed axis and then rolled to the edge of the embattlements and fell over the edge and down, down into the ocean below before disappearing under the waves. Wizards, warriors, witch smeller, druids and magical creatures staggered to their feet, coughing and choking, trying to work out exactly what had just gone. Queen Sycorax leapt up and ran towards Tsar and Kansu and Bodkin, running by her side. The dust fell all around them like blue rain. Tsar picked up the enchanted sword which had landed right in front of him. The writing on the blade had got so scratched and rubbed away on both sides of the helmet and on the other iron things and now just read once. We did it! Again! grinned Tsar as he put the sword into his scabbard. The two monarchs reached him where he stood, ragged and shaken, his quiff a little awry, but still Tsar-like in his jubilation. I told you we could do it, father! And did you see Bodkin? And did you see Caliburn? He cried, punching the air in triumph. I did fight the king, which I told you I could! What on earth is the boy talking about? snapped Queen Sycorax. And where is my daughter? There she is, said Tsar, pointing at the great cloud of gentle, shimmering, bright blue dust falling around them. Queen Sycorax was without words. She's exploded, explained Tsar. Queen Sycorax's chest heaved as she looked around at the clouds of blue dust before. Exploded, she said in horror. Me daughter exploded. What do you mean? She's exploded. And why are ye celebrating? The child saved you, you horrible boy. You're as bad as that witch. She hadn't been such a great queen. You might have thought that Queen Cyclax staggered a little. She certainly turned deathly pale. And then she knelt down on the floor where the enchanted spoon and 30 iron pins lay quiet and cold and lifeless. She reached out a trembling hand to touch them. Squeeze Juice whispered, Stop your worries, a sween, stop your worries, she's be back. Putting his little claw like hands lovingly on the bewildered Queen's cheek, Queen Cycrax had given her heart away a long time ago, but kneeling in the dust there, one, two, three, tears dropped from her cold blue eyes. Out of the way, out of the way, said the once sprite, swooping from nowhere jumping from the back of the hovering falcon and collecting the tears one, two, three as they dropped from the cheek of the morning queen. And Canso stepped in hurriedly. For shame, Zara, you have to explain. Your daughter will regenerate Cycrax. She has a magic eye, which makes her a very great enchanter. And very great enchanters have more than one life. Regenerate, said Queen Cycrax. Magic eye? More than one life? She'd forgotten how horribly confusing magical people were. They couldn't even obey the normal rules about life and death. When? When? When will she regenerate? Gabbled Sycorax. In a moment or two, said Encanto soothingly. It, it can take a while. In the meantime, we have to be careful not to step on any of this blue dust. This blue dust is me daughter! Said Queen Sycorax, looking around in astonishment and horror. What is this man doing? hissed Squeeze Juice. 
That man was the Druid commander. The Druid commander was behaving in a rather peculiar manner. He was working frantically, and as they looked more closely, they could see he was actually spelling the blue dust with his spelling staff, collecting bright clouds of it and putting it in the gourd. Uh, yes, Encanso said very puzzled. What on earth are you doing, Druid commander? Didn't you see the girl, the enchanter, has magic mixed with iron, which makes her very, very dangerous, said the Druid commander. Quick, we don't have much time. We must trap her in here and then she won't be able to regenerate. Be very careful there, commander. We're talking about the pieces of a human being here. Yes, of an extremely, very, highly, very dangerous, hazardous human being, said the Druid commander. How dare ye take advantage of my daughter's dust-like state to attempt a prisoner? Snapped Queen Sycorax. Don't you move any closer, Queen, warned the druid, pointing his staff at her, or I will put the lid on this gourd and throw it into the sea. And that will be far worse for your daughter than you can imagine, for she will be half here and half there. And Canso and Sycorax froze, for a state of limbo was a dreadful fate. But the werewolf stepped forward, growling low, ominous, deep in his throat. Get back, ordered Encanso. That druid is dangerous. The werewolf ignored him. What are you doing, werewolf? asked the druid commander, madly sweeping the blue dust into the good and great drifts. drifts. Step back, you evil boundless beast. Halt, you loveless verbal. I'm doing historically important work here. And then Tsar had a brilliant idea. And he did a really good thing. A really, really, really good thing. Tsar needed to get rid of those witches. He knew that it was unlikely that the king witch would have been defeated forever. His hand was still burning, bright green. He needed all of the ingredients in the spell to get rid of witches. And they had just gone to a considerable length to get hold of this one. But for the first time in Tsar's life, he cared about somebody else more than he did about himself. So Tsar undid this stopper on the collecting bottle he was carrying. In a great glorious roar, the giant's last breath blasted out of the collecting bottle into what had been shrunk only an hour or so earlier. Forgive them! roared the giant's last breath. Forgive them! added Decibel so loud that Sycorax and Encanso and Tsar and Bodkin had to put their hands over their ears. Forgive them! That's the end of that chapter. See you later. Bye.